It's time for laughs with Mr. Thomas. Here we go. We've made it on to lesson number four, inverse functions of this functions chapter. So what is meant by an inverse function? Well, if you remember, a function is where each element in A corresponds to one element in B. So if you remember, you had your arrow diagram, you had your elements in A, and they were all linking across to an element in B. So every single one of these went over to just one value in B. A function that allows us to go back the way from B to A is an inverse function, but there must be just one-to-one -one correspondence between the domain and the range. So every single value in A must link just to one value in B, and every single value in B must link to one in A. So for example, this arrow diagram here has us going from a to B. So we've got the domain and the range. So negative 2 links to 4, negative 1 links to 1, 0 links to 0, and 1 links to 1. So that would be a function, it's absolutely fine. But going back the way, 0 links to 0, that's fine, that just links to one number, but 1 links to both negative 1 and 1. So there's not just one to one correspondence there because that's linking to two numbers. So here each element in A links to just 1 in B but there's not one-to-one -one correspondence. As you can see, going back the way, it doesn't work. So you would say that an inverse does not exist. However, let's look at another function. Let's say we've got g of x. Again, we've got the domain and we've got the range. So here, negative two would link to negative seven, negative one to negative five, zero to negative three, and then one to negative one. So that's fine. Every element in A links across to just one element in B. And also going back the way, every single element in B links to just one value in A. So you could say for that one, there is one-to-one -one correspondence, so an inverse would exist. So what am I talking about the inverse? What is it with going back the way? How would you do that? Well, if you think about it, let's look at the function f of x equals 5x. So here's our function here. We've got different elements in A. If you multiply them by 5, then you would get your range. So we've got that. So to go from A to B, we'd multiply by 5. But how would you go back the way? How would you go from B to A? Let's ask somebody in Mr. Griffin's class. Megan, go for it. What would you do? To go back the way from B to A, you would divide by 5. You got it. Yes you would divide by five, going back the way. So to go from the left to the right, you'd multiply by five. The opposite of that would be divide by five. So here, you could say that the inverse would be a fifth of x, we're dividing by five. And the way you write the inverse is f to the negative one of x. This means to go back the way, this is what you would do. So that's how it is written. Obviously for this one, it is quite easy. Multiplying by five, the opposite to that is divide by five. But some of them are a lot harder, and there's different steps that make it quite simple for you. So here is what you would do. So for functions that are not straightforward, we have to think back to changing the subject and follow these steps. So the first thing you want to do is you want to change f of x to y. Step two, you want to change the subject of the formula to x. And third step is you want to swap the y for x and you want to swap the x for f to the negative 1 of x, the inverse. I'll show you with an example and this should make a wee bit more sense. So find the inverse of f of x equals 4x plus 3. Some of you may be able to do this in your head but this is the steps that you would follow to make sure that you don't make a mistake. This is your working for it. So the first thing you want to do is you want to think I'm swapping f of x for y. So instead of f of x equals, write y equals. After that, you want to change the subject of the formula to x. Anybody not sure about changing the subject of a formula? Remember, what you want to do is you're looking at this right-hand side and thinking, what am I doing to x? Well, I'm timesing it by 4 and I'm adding 3. So I'm multiplying and I'm adding. 
However, when you change the subject to a formula, you want to reverse that. You want to undo these bits. So the first thing you would do is you would undo the add. So the opposite of the add would be take away. So you'd have to subtract three from both sides or move the three over and then take away. After that, you want to undo the multiply. I prefer writing it back to front. So just writing that as 4x equals y minus 3. It's changing the side from left to right. And then after that, undo the multiply. Opposite of times by 4 is divide by 4. So then I would be left with that. So that would be x equals. That's me change the subject of the formula to x. The last thing to do is swap the y for x. So instead of writing y, change that to an x. And swap the x here with f to the negative 1 of x. So you can say that inverse f to the negative 1 of x would equal x minus 3 over 4. And that is the inverse. That is what you would do. Let's try another example. Example number 3. So find the inverse of f of x equals a third of x plus 7. Doing this one the exact same way, change f of x to y. So you'd have y equals a third of x plus 7. 7. To do that, you then want to change the subject of the formula to x. Well, what are you doing with x? Well, really, it's in brackets, so you're adding 7, you're adding, and then you're dividing by 3. So you want to undo that. So, first of all, you want to get rid of the divide. So the opposite of the divide by 3 would be times by 3. So multiply both sides by 3. So to have 3y equals x plus 7, from there again, if you like to write it back to front, you can do that. But really, you want to get rid of this add 7. So the opposite of add 7, you subtract 7 from both sides. Once you're at that stage, swap the y for x. So replace this y for an x. And swap the x for f to the negative 1 of x. And that would give you the 3x minus 7. That would be the inverse. Let's do one final example. So example number 4. Find f of the inverse if f of x equals 5x plus 2. So an f of f to the negative 1 of x. So it sometimes looks a wee bit confusing here. But what you want to think is, right, well, I'll get rid of that. What I want to do is I'm starting with the middle again. So I want to work out the f to the negative 1 of x of f of x. So start in the middle and think, right, well, to do that, I want the inverse of f of x. So to do that, you swap the f of x for y. So that becomes y equals 5x add 2. Then you want to change the subject of the formula to x. So subtract 2 from both sides. You would then write it back to front if you want. And then divide both sides by 5. So I'd have x equals y minus 2 over 5. Once you've done that, swap the x for f to the negative 1 of x. And swap the y for x. So that is what the inverse is going to be. Okay, so that's the inverse. But what I'm then asked to do is I'm asked to work out f of this part here, which is the inverse. So if you're starting with f of x, which is 5x add 2, you're then asked for f of f to the negative 1 of x, which you've just worked out. So you're replacing x with the inverse, which is x minus 2 over 5. So in here, you replace x with the inverse which is x minus 2 over 5. To work that out then, well, really, you multiply them by 5 and you're dividing by 5, so they would cancel out, leaving you just with x minus 2, and then that plus 2. From there, well, if you subtract 2 and you add 2, they would also cancel out, leaving you just with x. Whenever you do this, really what we're doing here is we're working at the inverse and then we're undoing it. So what we're doing is... Applying a function to its inverse or vice versa will always just give us x. Really, because the function and its inverse will cancel each other out. So, if you work out f to the negative 1 of f of x, you'll just get x. Or if you work out f of f to the negative 1 of x, again, you just get back to x. So really, these are just cancelling each other out. You're starting with some input, you're applying something to it, and then you're undoing that with the inverse. So you're just getting back to the input, your x. Okay, so you need to look out for that. Give these questions a shot. Work it out the inverse. See how it goes. Any problems, let me know. Have fun. Good luck. Enjoy.